Australian researchers have identified nine new genes linked to apraxia, the most severe type of childhood speech disorder. And eight of these genes are critical in a process which helps turn specific genes on or off. Here's Professor Angela Morgan from the Murdoch Children's Research Institute. Angela led the international study. Hi there. So what is, firstly, apraxia? Hi, Roz. Thanks for having me. Uh, apraxia is a rare and severe speech disorder where children can't produce or sequence their sounds correctly, and it also affects their stress or prosody of speech. How common is it? Uh, around one in a thousand children are affected, or putting that into context, I guess, around one child every couple of schools in the community. Is it a condition that children have from birth? Yes, uh, indeed, children do have this condition from birth and the genes we've identified are really important in embryological development, so this work helps to confirm that. Okay, so what role do these new genes play in the condition? Yeah, we know that these genes are core, as I said, for embryological development and particularly development of the brain and development of brain regions that then help to control speech and to aid speech development. And how can the knowledge then uh, of these uh, genes help in the treatment of the condition? Yes, that's uh, been what we've been trying to, to do is to better understand the cause of the condition. At the moment, we've just been treating symptoms because we haven't understood any of the underlying causes. But now that we can pinpoint the biology, we hope that rather than just putting a Band-Aid on a broken arm, we might be able to better understand how to target the, these underlying biological causes through these gene pathways. So what sort of treatments could that lead to? Yeah, so um, clearly you're thinking about different genetic um, or gene therapies. So obviously that work would be quite a way away. But there also might be other, other pharmacological or drug therapies that one might be able to use uh, and that might be um, more easily developed. Does it lead, Angela, to earlier identification and therefore a lot earlier intervention and therapy? Um, if so, what difference could that make? Yeah, absolutely. So for the moment, this is what we're looking at is earlier identification and through the wonderful um, work of um, new genetic sequencing, we're able to more rapidly identify these gene changes in children as soon as birth. Uh, and so therefore, parents will know that prognostically their child might have a challenge with speech therapy and so therefore speech development rather and get them into intensive speech therapy programs much earlier. So this could really help to mitigate other long-term impacts um, such as literacy problems and then other educational and psychosocial issues you can have associated with speech disorder. And what about the, sorry to interrupt, Angela, but what about the turning off of eight of these nine genes? Um, if you can do that, wouldn't that eliminate the condition? Yes, Ross, so that's um, absolutely a sort of a holy grail of being able to try and understand how we can um, affect um, genes, genes being turned on and being turned off. So certainly there are research groups around the world looking at um, developing those types of therapies and approaches. So do you see this work uh, as a breakthrough in the understanding and treatment uh, of apraxia? Well, certainly um, through this single paper, we've almost doubled the number of genes that we now know are associated with apraxia. So uh, as many as just 10 or 15 years ago, we only had sort of one known gene in the field. So yeah, absolutely. We've really helped to understand um, genetic contributions to speech conditions. And can people recover from apraxia or do people just learn to live with it as they grow up? Yeah, that's a really great question. So on the positive side, uh, whilst it may take many sessions of therapy over many years, absolutely individuals do really improve their speech production over time. Um, so, so that's something that's quite positive. But we're hoping through this kind of research we can reduce years of therapy down from, say, eight years, which many individuals may have, down to a much um, more palatable time frame. Professor Angela Morgan, good to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Ros. Thank you.